The purpose of this video is to show you how to perform a leak-free pump seal replacement. We're going to be replacing the motor shaft seal and gasket on a Stayrite D-Series pump. First, let's talk about the types of leaks. You could have a face gasket leak where it's leaking around the bolts. You could have a shaft seal leak where it's leaking around the motor shaft. There's also leaks that occur when the volute cracks and it could crack because the pump overheated or if the water froze inside the pump. So make sure that you don't have cracks in the volute housing of the pump first or else you could replace a seal and you'll still have a leak. Now let's go on from there. As with any maintenance operation, you always first want to remove and lock out power from whatever it is that you're working on. With a pumping system, you also want to remove any pressure that may be on the system. And then once you've verified there's no pressure, you can close off any isolation valves going to or coming from the pump. Before we get started taking things apart, it's a good idea to have a safe place to put all the tools and parts so they don't roll away and get lost while you're working. Next you want to drain the pump and there's a drain at the bottom of the volute. You can remove that. That will also verify there's no pressure on the system just in case the gauge is inoperative and it shows zero and there's still a little pressure left on it. Next you're gonna take and remove the motor hold down bolts. There's four of those at the bottom of the pump motor and you can see those on the picture here after you've got those four out you're going to remove the eight adapter plate bolts and they're circled here in red take all those out and then we're going to pry the motor away from the pump volute when you remove the pump motor and adapter from the volute you want to do it gently but you're going to also have to use some force. I like to use small pry bars and tap on them on the gasket material in order to wedge the motor and adapter away from the pump body. Gently moving it back and forth and pulling it away from the volute. This will pull that out and then you can set it on a safe dry surface to work on. I like using a car mat or something where the pump won't get scratched and it's easy to work on. The way to achieve a leak-free seal replacement is to make sure that all your mating surfaces are clean. The way I like to do this is to use a scraper first, get off all the large pieces of gasket, then go with a razor knife and some of the pieces will be stuck on fairly well and I can scrape them off, make sure the blade is, is level with the mating surface, and then to clean it with the wire brush really take your time and do a good job and that'll make sure there's no leaks. The next step after that's nice and clean is to use a socket wrench and remove the impeller bolt that comes out in a counterclockwise direction. Some pumps will use an impeller screw that's left hand thread but this is standard thread comes out in counterclockwise direction take it out and then put it somewhere safe so you won't lose it. Then you pry off the impeller. I like to use two small pry bars and go from opposite directions. Pull it off gently rocking it back and forth and then also check to make sure that you don't lose the shaft key. You're going to need that so put it away somewhere where you won't lose it. If you're lucky the motor shaft sleeve came out with the impeller so that you can easily clean it so that again you want to save and put away remove any cardboard or gasket material that you find and if the impeller bolt washer it's stainless steel if that didn't come out you want to gently tap that out clean any gasket material off there as well and save it because you'll need it again next is to remove the motor adapter plate there's four screws, or I'm sorry, four bolts that bolt that on. 
and sometimes they're on there pretty tight. Take all four of those off, put them away safe, and then use a saw face or dead blow hammer and gently tap that off. When you lift it, lift it straight up so that you don't damage the shaft. If the water slinger ring comes off the shaft, you want to put that back. In the center is your old stationary seat seal. You want to pop that out with a socket and a small hammer or dead blow hammer. Just taps right out. It's a two-piece seal. There's a ceramic ring that sits inside of a rubber seat. So it's a two-part seal. You can throw that away. You won't need it anymore. The next step is really important. This is the secret to the whole leak-free pump seal replacement. Make sure all your surfaces are clean. Both sides. I like to use a high-pressure washer and really get in and clean every little bit of old gasket, crud, whatever you find in there, just clean that out really well. Once it's clean, inspect your parts. Inspect the shaft key for straightness. Make sure the edges are sharp. Make sure there's no pitting on your impeller. And if it's pitted and it looks like Swiss cheese, it means there's been cavitation and the impeller is no good. This is a good impeller. So inspect it. Make sure both sides are good. Look at all your wear surfaces. And make sure that they're in good order. Check your impeller vanes and make sure they're nice and sharp and not worn out. If everything on the impeller looks good, you can reuse the same impeller. Most of the time, those impellers will last for years and years. The parts that make up the seal kit are twofold. One is the paper gasket that goes in between the volute and the adapter plate. There's eight bolt holes in it, and it's a fiber material. The other parts are inside the box. There's a seal itself and some washers and gaskets that are in there. The pump seal has two parts. There's a stationary seat with the rubber boot and the ceramic ring. There's also the rotating seal. The rotating seal has two parts. It has a rubber side and a carbon wear ring side. Make sure that you put the carbon wear ring facing the highly polished face of the stationary seat ceramic ring. The next step is the motor adapter plate. You want to make sure that the inside seat for the stationary gasket seal is extremely clean. Double check it, wipe it out with a paper towel. Then using gloves because you don't want to get any dirt or oil or grease on that ceramic piece, take the piece out of the kit, lubricate it up. I like to use a gritless soft soap hand cleaner and that will lubricate up that seal. I'll rub it around the outside of the seal and also into the seat on the adapter plate. Once that's in the adapter plate, I push it in, rubber side towards the plate, ceramic side up with the paper washer over the top. It's got a piece of cardboard or paper material and you press on that, not on the ceramic, and firmly push that down into the seat flip the adapter plate over, check both sides to make sure that that seat is all the way in and seated well into the adapter plate. If you have any trouble getting the stationary seat to fit all the way into the adapter plate, you can use a one inch piece of standard pipe on top of the cardboard washer and gently tap that seal or that stationary seat into the adapter plate so that it mates tightly into it. If you hit it too hard you could crack the ceramic. You don't want to do that so tap it in lightly and it'll go in nice and smooth. This would be a good time to talk about order of assembly. Putting things back together in order. The, this first picture shows the impeller and the keyway and on top of the keyway there is a gasket with a slot in it for the shaft key and the key locks the impeller and the shaft together so they spin as one. After that 
the rubber side with the dot of the pump seal goes against the impeller. And you can see it here in the picture with the carbon ring facing up and the rubber side against that impeller. Next, the ceramic seal with the face against the carbon ring. And you can see that in this picture where they're all lined up together. So, so it's gasket, seal with the rubber side facing the impeller, carbon ring against the ceramic all together. Next we're going to clean up the shaft sleeve. When you pull off the old seal you'll notice that there might be some pitting and corrosion and it's kind of dirty. So we want to clean that off very well so the, the new shaft seal will seat on it properly and there's no places for water to seep by. So I like to use a fine grade plumbing sandpaper and this is the same type of sandpaper that a plumber will use when he's doing copper fittings and clean it off. Take your time, do a real good job, check it back and forth a couple times. We're going to get this ready in preparation of putting on the pump adapter plate. And this is the plate that goes in between the motor and the volute. When the shaft sleeve looks good to you, we're going to put it over the top of the motor shaft. Look for the keyway, and you want to line those two up. There's a slot on the motor shaft and on the sleeve itself. If the sling ring came off, you want to put that back because that protects the motor from any water drips that might come up and try to work their way in towards the motor. Once that's done, we're going to take the motor adapter plate and we're going to slowly and carefully line it up and it's got a top to it and there's a casting mark on the top and you can see it inside and there's a metal plate on on the outside and that goes towards the top where the grease seals are on the motor so get the motor situated once you have the motor situated line up the top and carefully place it down over the top of the motor shaft trying not to touch the ceramic to the shaft itself. Once that's on and the bolt holes are lined up, take your bolts, apply a little bit of anti-seize to each one, make sure you have the lock ring and the bolt and then tighten those down all four of them the same way. Just compress the lock washer. You don't have to muscle them down too hard. Once those are hand tightened in, take your wrench and tighten them down. You don't have to over torque these, but make sure they're on nice and tight. Now we're going to talk about the key. This square key has a wide spot in it and the rest of the shaft is a little narrower. The wide, the wide part fits down inside the shaft sleeve, the motor shaft sleeve, and the other part faces up. And this is what the impeller is going to slide onto. So there's a good look of it inside the keyway. Next we're going to take the impeller seal and we're going to lubricate up the inside with liquid hand soap and make sure that you put the carbon ring side down that means the dot is going to face up press down firmly with your thumbs on opposing sides of the seal until the top of the seal or the rubber side is flush with the top of the motor shaft sleeve it's a pretty firm or pretty tight fit but make sure that it's even with the top of the shaft sleeve. Next we're going to take the impeller and we're going to slide the impeller on over the top of that. But before we do it, there is a gasket with a keyway and that holds the motor shaft impeller key in place. So line everything up with the gasket first, press it from side to side and it should fit snugly down on top of the impeller. 
when bolting on the impeller, there's a certain order of operation that you need to follow. First, you'll take the impeller bolt and slide on the gasketed, o uh, gasketed washer. It's just a washer with a rubber ring on the inside. And then you'll put on the impeller washer. It's a two-sided washer. One side is rounded on the edges. The other side is sharp. The rounded side goes towards the washer with the rubber ring, then the gasket. Then take those four parts, put a drop of blue Loctite, it's medium strength Loctite, and hand tighten it to make sure the threads line up properly, you don't cross thread anything. Once it's snug, you can take your ratchet and tighten it on down. Now is a good time to install the adapter gasket. I like to use a little bit of RTV gasket sealant so it stays in place and line up your bolt holes and while that's setting up we'll clean off the volute face. This is the face where that gasket will mate to. The cleaner it is the better your chances that you'll have a leak free pump seal replacement. I like to go over it a couple times then brush it with a wire brush make sure there's no little bits of stuff on there all right, now is a good time after that's completely clean to inspect something inside the volute. There is a diffuser inside the volute, and the diffuser has a bronze ring pressed into it. There's the bronze ring pressed into the diffuser. Let's look at an exploded diagram, show you how that goes in the pump. Here's an exploded diagram, and we'll zoom in take a closer look it's number 13 and number 13 we will highlight in bronze for you that's your wear ring and the impeller fits inside there which is inside number 18 which is your diffuser that's inside the volume if that wear ring is sticking out go ahead and tap it back in place with a soft face hammer if it's sticking out your pump may make noise when you bolt everything back together Now you're ready to bolt the motor back onto the volute. I like to use a starter bolt and with a little bit of anti-seize. It's good to have a friend because these pumps are kind of heavy. And put the pump and motor back onto the standoffs, line everything up, carefully slide the impeller back into the wear ring, make sure your bolt holes line up. And once it's lined up and you start putting the bolts in, the procedure is to clean the bolt, add a little anti-seize, and then go in an opposite pattern. So if you do one bolt on one side of the pump, then go to the other side of the pump and do the next bolt, and all the way around until it's snug. Once you've replaced all the bolts, check your plugs. Make sure the plugs are all back in with a little Teflon tape so they don't leak. Triple check all your bolts. Make sure everything's good, snug, and tight. I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope this helped you perform a leak-free pump seal replacement. If you'd like more information, you can go to the Show More of this video.